Imagine California education in the year 1988. All students have been hearing about in the past few years is more and more budget cuts. But then there is hope. There is talk about a new, effective education funding system that would pour money into schools. In the years to come, schools would not only use this money to support their current programs, but they would use this money to expand on the programs that they offered. This, in turn, would help provide the quality education that so many students at this time desired. Now let's fast forward to the 2012-2013 school year. Many of those same programs used to be well-funded, but no longer are. What happened to this new effective education funding system? Where did all the money go? When I heard news that school days might be cut from my school year, I had to ask some of these same questions. The new effective education funding system was created by Proposition 98, a law that has provided money to California education since its passing in 1988. It guarantees pre-kindergarten to community college education to receive roughly 40% of the state's general budget. Before Proposition 98 was passed, education received money from local taxes. But then another law, Proposition 13, was passed that limited the maximum amount of money that could be taxed on property taxes, a form of local tax. As a result, education suffered significant funding losses. Proposition 98 was the solution to such deprived funding. Proposition 98 not only allowed education to gain a foothold, but also allowed education to improve. Class sizes were reduced, budget difficulties became nearly non-existent, and for a while, California teachers became the highest paid in the nation. Recently, however, the money supplied to education has not been enough to sustain all the great things Proposition 98 originally created. The main cause of this is the volatility of funding. Proposition 98 receives a percentage of the state budget, which directly reflects the state of the economy. And because of the ups and downs of the economy, the volatility of funding continues to plague every school in California to this day. Last fall, I visited my district's education office. This multi-million dollar building, built near the height of the recession, was supposed to be expanded to twice the original size. I was astounded, thinking the district, district put so much money into this one building. Later, I came to realize that the state had allocated that money to building uses in general. Although we might have needed this building, we could have put that money to a better use. But alas, one of the most controversial issues resulting from Proposition 98 is that educators and administrators no longer have power over certain aspects of a school's allocation of money, even though they are the ones dealing with education on a day-to-day -day basis. Despite efforts to help education, California ranks in the 40s out of 50 states in funding per student. We continue to spend only $7,000 on the average pre-kindergarten to community college student, while we spend over $40,000 on the average prisoner, even though studies have shown that those who receive a better education are less likely to commit crimes. Overall, Proposition 98 did help education achieve many great things. But our education system still requires help. Changes must be made if we are to provide our students with the quality, knowledge, and skills they require to lead a successful life. So even the small things, such as a few school days, really do matter in allowing students to achieve their dreams. Thank you.